All right, so this was the situation and this is what we came up with. So what's the instrument that this was on? Yeah, um, you're gonna go all the way. Um, it's the Q, uh, surveys 15, MC surveys 15. Oh, okay. So here was the, uh, the deal was, and it'll be a little bit easier to see um, when you see what it looks like. Let me just open it up so you can see. Fun. Uh, okay, so there's dashboard. Go, to, go up there to the default dashboard and let's go use a custom dashboard. Click on that. Go down W WIP record for project flow. Oh, look at that. Over there to MC surveys 15, the far under expanded surveys. Here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, if you go up to the one that's is yellow. Yeah, it shows um, some of the data in there and some of the data not. So it, All right. it's oh, okay, that's good. And here's our autofill form too. All right. So the challenge is, and this won't take too long, but oh, real quick, I think that you all would see this. This is a new addition to RedCap with the latest version I added. Notice up here, there's an autofill form. Uh, this allows you to generate some uh, fake data for your project for testing purposes. So I haven't uh, fleshed this out totally, but I played with it a little bit and I think it can be very handy. Anyway. Um, I've been so, using it on this one to test. I are can you? only see half your screen. Sorry? I can only see like half of your screen top half bottom half right half or left half um my right half your right half looks fine oh. here I'm yeah looks fine here tanya are you okay. zoomed in it's just me <laughs> well tanya use both of your eyes <laughs> yeah really all right so, so do, do the show oh, sorry do you the are show not five. You already know how to use this, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so here's the deal. We're getting an external import into this project of data. However, there will be data that's imported and there will be blanks. You know, so it's coming from a third party. Uh, and if any of you use MindCrowd, that's who we're talking about. We're getting data from MindCrowd. And they ask a group of questions. This precision aging network project is enormous. Um, props to Tanya on this. But the questions are coming, the data is coming in from an export. However, sometimes questions were not answered by the participant. And it's apparently very important that all questions get answered. So how do you figure out how to bring in an, a question, and, and these are dropdowns, as you see, how do you export in the data and prevent anyone from overwriting that uh, once you've imported it? Right. And that in leaving blanks where there are blanks. Are there, are there blanks in this, Tanya? Yeah, go down further. I was just testing, making sure That's I all right. Had... I just wondered. Yeah. Scroll down a lot. There you go. Now you can start getting into where you change it. So so where I still okay, so 
Yeah, so you can click on those. Go ahead and click on those. You can go into oh, you, those. Okay, so yeah. these are, uh, well, why can we click on these? It doesn't matter. Let's go back think, to the blank. Because the if hasn't been written yet. Yeah, right. But I need to have a blank. Well. All right. So I'm going to go back to that other record real quick. And so. But now everything's going to have data. Yeah, that's fine. Blank. Yeah. So now we're going to pretend that we got an import, right? So the drop down works just fine. All right, never did this activity. We got that imported. We did not get these imported. I'm gonna save and stay. Sort of now creating this environment where we got the import. So now notice that you the field is now read only. You cannot change this. And that, but you can change these. You can change these until you get to, um, you know, once you've saved it, which is what would happen in an import, it would be saved. Then um, you, but now you can't click on it. And, and so the point is, how do you, uh, you know, save the integrity of the data import and keep people from overriding it? And the answer is using um, a, an if statement we worked out, basically saying if the field had a value in it, it was greater than zero, then it's read only. So once there's data in it, then uh, it would now be, you'd be unable to write into it. So when the import happens, then, um, you know, it would uh, not be writable. So that was the other thing I wanted to point out because I know there are situations periodically where you import data, you don't want it changed. How do you ensure that the data that was imported, uh, you maintain that integrity? This is how you would do it with this if statement that is relatively, uh, it came out in the past year, but you know we haven't used it quite in this way. So um, if it was all character driven, just so you know, I think that using uh, the length statement, if you haven't used that yet, and these are uh, in the special functions, so you're asking if the length of this variable um, is greater than zero, then read only. And so this, if it was a character field, this is numeric. So, um, and the dropdown is zero. So anything greater than zero, that's why this works. But if you had like a character field for some reason, you were importing text, uh, you could use this. So that's that. That was kind of exciting because I know we've had occasion um, at different times where we needed to lock down a field um, without using the locking feature that's down um, at the bottom of these records. And this is an unusually onerous form here, but you know you don't have to lock it just to to set it. Um, and you can lock. So now you can basically lock individual fields once data has been entered.